Chair, members of the committee, uh, the, the issue here is that we currently have a system of security release. It's run by the courts. It's cash. Uh, persons put up a certain cash percentage of the amount of money to ensure that they'll return. Uh, there are certain things that are looked at, including public safety and, and the likelihood the person will return when the, that decision is made. Uh, many other states have what is called a commercial surety system where a private bond is put up. It's covered by an insurance company. There was a bill filed last year that would have reinstituted the system. We had this in the early 70s, and it was uh, eliminated, eliminated, I believe, in 1973. Um, you had a bill last session. The bill was turned into a, a that we would look at this during the interim, and but that's what the Judiciary Committee is doing. Uh, we have had a work group that's met several times. One of the purposes of the work group is to get the technical issues correct. Uh, we met a week ago. Uh, we have another meeting on the 20th um, with a larger group. I met the other day with the people from the bail industry, with the uh, legislative counsel's office, and, and the uh, court administrator's office to get that part of the bill that relates to courts correct from a technical viewpoint. I have a meeting next week with the same group, except for the courts. This time we're meeting with the insurance division because there is an insurance aspect here and they would have regulatory uh, authority over that part of it to get the technical aspect of that correct. Another issue from a technical viewpoint is we have what are called bail recovery agents on, and we are looking to have DPSST have some kind of training and licensing program for that. One possibility is simply say if you're a private investigator, then you would be also a bail recovery agent. We, I communicated, uh, <coughs> had email contact with the head of DPSST. He's asked for meeting. We're going to meet with legislative counsel's office, with the bail industry, and then we get all of this done. We will come back to a, a larger group on October 20th. Needless to say, there are still large policy issues involved here, but at least the purpose of the work group is to get a bill that is, as much as possible, technically correct. So that's that's where we stand, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. All right, thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to have to leave. I wanted to put on the record that I appreciate all the meetings of Mr. Taylor and, and both you and, and uh, uh, Chair Barker looking at this to see if we can. Uh, there's been a lot of meetings. I've attended some of the meetings. and. Uh, uh, there's a past history that sort of influenced some of the decision, but I think the group's worked hard in trying to find a solution, and I do appreciate uh, Mr. Taylor's leadership in this, and uh, hope we'll continue to look at it. It could, it could be, um, could save the state some money, and it could also uh, be more effective in the judicial system. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, so we're going to start off in the, the uh, I guess the format here is that we're going to have the case, quote unquote, four by Jerry Watson. Uh, each side that will be presenting will have 15 minutes for their presentation. We'll have questions after each of the uh, presentations. So, uh, Mr. Watson. Thank you, uh, Chairman Porzanski and uh, Chairman Barker, and thank you to the uh, members of your respective committees. Um, and thank you for outlining for us the issues. I. Uh, I'm here on behalf of a number of insurance companies who already write surety business in your state. What they're basically seeking is simply... Right before we go, uh, one thing I need you to do is put your name on the record. Not oh, I'm sorry. I said. That's fine. I, I, I'm sorry. My name is Jerry Watson. Uh, I am an attorney. Uh, in January, I'll begin my 43rd year of representing insurance companies that write surety bonds. And a number of those companies uh, for many years have written surety bonds in your state. Uh, I'm here on their behalf uh, requesting that you give consideration to the proposition of their being allowed to add bail bonds to their product list. Uh, the persons who asked me to come and testify today instructed me that I should make it clear to the very best of my ability that they nor I am asking uh, that anything currently in place in your code of criminal procedure relative to the release of persons pending trial is to be displaced or changed in any way. We're not seeking to replace uh, any choices that your judges have today, nor are we seeking to alter in any respect the operations of the pretrial service offices in the various counties in your state. 
that was very important to them that you understand that we're not here challenging any other procedure or asking for any changes other than that we be allowed to be an additional choice to the judges as they make their release decisions. Now, at the risk of telling you something that you may already very well know, I have to lay a little bit of groundwork. Um, Section 14 of your Oregon State Constitution says that persons who are released pending trial shall be released by sufficient surety. Uh, what this means, of course, among other things, is that the judge who's going to make that release decision has a duty to satisfy himself as to the sufficiency of the intention of the defendant to return to court when he's told to be there. Uh, actually, the judge is to take something from the defendant. The defendant is to present something to the court that the court can hold in exchange for the defendant being released pending trial. Now, this thing the court will hold doesn't necessarily have to be something tangible. It can be, and frequently is, something just as simple as a promise. Uh, the defendant has been charged with a minor offense. He has ties to the community. He's never been in trouble before. Uh, he uh, is not a flight risk. And he, in effect, says to the judge, Judge, if you will let me out of jail until my trial so that I can assist my counsel in the defense of my case and so that I can take care of other important matters in my life, I promise you that I'll come back when I'm supposed to come back. And the judge willingly accepts that promise, and the person is released. That's called an own recognizance release, or in Oregon, it's referred to simply as an OR release. There are other times when the judge may feel that he's uncomfortable or she's uncomfortable by just accepting the defendant's promise. And the court will want something of value put up to, in effect, guarantee the reappearance of that defendant. Uh, that is called security bail. In reality, it probably should be called partial security bail because it only requires the deposit of 10% of the amount of the bail. If the court has set bail at $10,000 and the court is uncomfortable that the defendant will reappear just because he promised to, the court may say, I would rather have you put up the 10% deposit with the clerk of my court. Now, that's the only other alternative, really, of any practical significance that your courts have today, except a promise that the person will reappear or order that the person put up 10% of the amount of the bail with the court. What we are proposing is that you consider allowing commercial bail to be written by these insurance companies, whereby if the court considers that the crime is of a more serious nature, that there is risk of flight, that this person might be a danger if they were not more closely monitored, that there needs to be some third party who has a significant amount of money at risk if they do not get the defendant back to court when he's supposed to be there, then the court would order a commercial surety bond written in the amount of the bail. Under that program, an insurance company would secure the release of the defendant and guarantee his reappearance under the penalty that if they did not, within the allotted time, get the defendant back to court, then the, the insurance company has to pay the full amount of the bail to the court. Um, as I said, these insurance companies are already here. You had, you had sh commercial bail in Oregon, I think it was some 30 years ago. That was different. Those were what we call in the industry property bondsmen. They would put up some piece of property or some tangible asset and they would write their penal bail liability against that asset. And it gets pretty dicey in most of the states that used to have that. And when this country was founded, that's the way bail was written. And it was written that way for hundreds of years. But slowly and surely, uh, the policymakers in the various jurisdictions have felt more comfortable with insurance companies. And, uh, and so many jurisdictions don't accept property bonding anymore, just as your state does not accept it anymore. And uh, so this is different. The persons who would be underwriting these bonds financially would be pre-qualified.